So Nate, this is a guy that I've been in on a little bit. Who's your number one buy? One of my favorite buyers right now is Najee Harris. All right. Arthur Smith, welcome to Pittsburgh. I'm actually happy you're here. Not from a Ravens fan perspective, or maybe I am. I'm not sure how this is going to actually correlate to on the field success wins and loss wise. But from an offensive standpoint, Arthur Smith going to Pittsburgh is good for Najee Harris. Um, Pittsburgh, by the way, signing Cordero Patterson today to a two-year deal. Um, he's back that. with Arthur Smith. So I heard heard some reaction on the timeline that people were pretty upset about that and how it affected Jalen Warren. To be honest, I don't think it's going to affect either one of these guys too much. It's Cordero Patterson we're talking about, who I think is like in his 30s at this point. He so I don't done much the last couple of years. Yeah, I don't think he's really a threat to either one of them. Um, we didn't really get to see a lot of Cordero Patterson last year. But Najee Harris should have a pretty good season. Arthur Smith obviously likes to run the ball. He likes to run the ball out of heavy sets. That's good for Najee Harris. That's what he does pretty well in. Um, you know, those other um, light box and things, that's where Jalen Warren gets put into. But Najee Harris really fits what Arthur Smith wants to do, run the ball on the ground, control the game through that ground and pound kind of game. And Najee Harris quietly had a pretty good year last year. A lot of people were out on Najee last year, but he ran for a thousand yards again, third time in three years. So he's consistent, had eight touchdowns last year, Mike finishes RB 23. Now I'm, I know it's not in a top 12 finish. And a lot of that came because he lost a lot of his receiving work to Jalen Warren, but still a top 24 running back. If you just look at Najee Harris as, Hey, I need, you know, a really good, um, RB three or just, you know, a basic RB two on my team. Najee Harris can do that for you, especially because he gives you a good floor at the running back position, which when I build my team around wide receivers, that is what I really am looking for. in my running backs is floor production because I know my wide receivers are giving me that upside on a week to week basis. He did have a career low, career low, 267 attempts, Mike. <laughs> so, so, you know, we, we're coming off a, a lighter season in Najee's world. Um, but with that, highs, career highs of four yards per attempt, 3.03 yards after contact per attempt, and also 14 runs of 15 plus yards or more, Mike. He was more explosive last year than he's ever, bun- uh, ever been. 25% of his yards came from breakaway, breakaway runs. And in the two seasons prior to this, it was closer to 10 to 15%. So this explosion that we've seen at Najee last year, quietly, uh, we haven't really seen before. I like Seeing that, I like looking back at those stats. Also, eighth most missed tackles forced in the league with 53. Look, the passing game is a little non-existent for Najee, and that's where it gets hard. Career low in targets and receptions, but he's good. He's good in receiving downs. He just lost all that work to Jalen Warren for a couple weeks there. Weeks 15 to 17, he had no targets. But week 18 and then into the wild card game, he had five targets in week 18, three in the wild card game. So... I'm not ready to say that Najee's not going to have any receiving work in the coming year. He'll still get some receiving work, maybe not the majority of it anymore. But at this point, like I said, I think Najee's a pretty good RB2. I think if we look at him kind of the way we've looked at David Montgomery in the past, Najee just might be the new David Montgomery. Now, the Steelers' offense isn't going to score that much that the Lions did this year. I think Montgomery had 15 touchdowns. I don't expect Najee to have 15 touchdowns this year. But I do think that Najee Harris can put up another top 24 Uh, running back season and right now you can get him for a mid second a 2025 second and a guy i'm selling everywhere if i had him tony pollard a pretty cheap rb2 for your team everyone's down now's the time to buy i love this this is great and if you can move on from tony pollard to go from that to Najee harris so anyway let's move on and let's talk about my buy low and that is washington commander's wide receiver terry mclaurin why i love terry mclaurin and you should too a thousand yards in every season, except his rookie year, where he only had 919 receiving yards. Nate, so he's done that. And would you like to know who his quarterbacks were? Oh, give me this list. I'm glad you asked. Case Keenum, Dwayne Haskins, Colt McCoy, Alex Smith, Kyle Allen, Taylor Heineke, a lot of Taylor Heineke, <laughs> Eric Gilbert, Carson Wentz, Sam Howell, and Jacoby Brissett. So he's 28 and a half currently. He's got plenty of time left. Like Mike Evans, let's not overthink it here, people. Players like this are still productive and have a decent amount of time left. You don't have to get these guys off your roster immediately. Mike Evans' example I just gave you. DeAndre Hopkins is another example that I'll give you. Do I think he's going to replicate his season that he had last year? Not necessarily. Do I think he's going to have a better season than Traylon Burks? 
Yes, I do. So these guys, they're older. They can still be, be productive. So I just see for 31, 23. I think that comes up a little bit in 2024 with some more solid quarterback play. Drake May has been linked there. I would love that for Terry McLaurin and the commanders as a whole. Right now, you could get him for uh, Michael Mayer, a mid to early second. I saw a couple of trades. Bryce Young for McLaurin and a third. Mm-hmm. Uh, late 24 first and a 25 third. So that was a one quarterback league for that one, which hence the late 24. Oh. I'm in on Terry McLaurin. It's always been productive, and I don't think that stops anytime soon. Yeah, I think he's a pretty good buy for a second round pick if you just need some competitive wide receiver depth because that's what you're going to get with McLaurin. And he is definitely undervalued for the production he's going to give you just because he doesn't necessarily have the upside that some of these younger guys have. But Mike, there's value in known production and you were talking about Mike Evans as a guy that you want to keep on your roster. Well, guess what? I'm saying right now that Mike Evans is a great buy. Um, future Hall of Famer. He's yeah. on a two-year deal now. Um, he's got Baker Mayfield throwing the ball, which I like that because he had a really good season last year. Um, had the highest PFF grade um, of the past four seasons. And because 4.2 yak wreck, which was a career high for Mike Evans, hmm. he had 2.32 yards per route run which was his third best season of his career. 13 touchdowns. You know he scores touchdowns. He had a wide receiver seven finish, Mike. was Is anyone talking about how Mike Evans was a wide receiver one last year? No. No one. They don't. He's just continuously great, and no one cares. I don't get it. I already have him on 50% of my leagues, so I, I can only go out and acquire him in a couple of leagues at this point because I've already picked him up everywhere because he's a value year in and year out. And now that he's got this contract, he's staying in Tampa. I like Baker Mayfield throwing him the ball. I think that's a really nice fit. He's continuously a buy. Look, he's got a 55.5% contested catch rate over his career, Mike. It's really hard to actually win 50-50 balls at a 50% rate. And Mike Evans has done it consistently. For as long as he's done it, too. For as long as he's done it. He had 30 30 contested catch targets last year, 153.3% of them. So... He continues to do great things for Tampa Bay. I have no problem going out and acquiring him. You can acquire him for a second-round pick right now. Similar cost, actually, to Terry McLaurin. Uh, maybe even a little bit cheaper because Mike Evans is old. But when you're a Hall of Fame wide receiver, as DeAndre Hopkins has shown us, you can play until you're 33, 34. We've seen Keenan Allen into his young 30s have a career year. This is a different NFL. And these wide receivers are going to be playing the really, really top ones are going to be playing into their mid thirties. So you still got, you know, I still think you have three, four years of Mike Evans left, go out and acquire him. A second round pick is you could probably get him for like a 25 second, honestly, um, from somebody uh, who's maybe looking to have a younger squad. Mike Evans is cheap. You got to go get him. Don't overthink it. Get productive people on your fantasy roster. Just write it in Sharpie. Mike Evans equals buy. And I know this is going to come as a shocker to you, but I'm going to tell you about a tight end that I think you should buy. Oh, really? Yes. And that is Dallas Cowboys tight end Jake Ferguson. Again, his breakout season in 2023, 81 catches for 854 yards and eight touchdowns on 108 targets. And the Dallas Cowboys receiver room got worse, Nate. <laughs> Somehow. Right now, Jalen Tolbert is listed as a starting wide receiver. Is he a buy low for you, or you just um, still have him? Everywhere? I guess he's a, he's a hold of my taxi squad still. He's okay. a hold at the bottom of my roster. Um, I, I saw someone drop him today, actually, in one of my leagues, um, in a one quarterback league, and scoop him up. I'm probably not going to pick him up. There's pretty small okay. rosters there. Oh, um, yeah. In deeper leagues, I'm definitely going to keep him in my roster though, because even if he's wide receiver three, I'm interested. The Akrak, Nate, 5.6 for a tight end. Thumbs up. Buddy. He's only 25. He's under contract for two more years. And look, if he doesn't get re-signed, because, you know, a lot of people are talking about the Dallas Cowboys might do this, might do that, might move on from Dak, which to me would be a mistake, might move on from CeeDee Lamb, might move on from Micah Parsons. So Jake Ferguson could find himself in that boat too. And, you know, they got Luke Schoenmacher and Peyton Hendershot there. Maybe they cobble together some semblance of a tight end room and move on from Jake Ferguson. Well, Dalton Schultz did just skippy in free agency. Congrats yep. on that three-year contract, Dalton. He's a target for me now. He's a target if he becomes a free agent. This is a guy who deserves to be, rightfully so, a starting tight end in the NFL. It's tight end nine in 2023, Nate. That is a tight end one. It is. Okay. Pretty impressive yeah. season. 
you could tear down from Mark Andrews and get a player like Jake Ferguson in a third if you're worried about the injury or if you want to get a little bit mm-hmm. younger, slightly younger. Uh, these are actual trades that I saw, by the way, on fantasycalc.com. Love that website. Uh, Demario Douglas and Khalil Shakir for Jake Ferguson. So two, well, one very productive wide receiver, one wide receiver that I think is going to be a breakout candidate in Khalil Shakir for a proven commodity. And Jameson Williams, straight up, for Jake Ferguson. I like that a lot. It's, that's an interesting one to me, and that's why I I'm put it on. I'm everywhere. Yeah, I, I put that on here because I figured you would be the guy that would be like, yep, give me a tight end one for Jameson Williams. Yep. Give me the upgrade somewhere else. I'd like to take a moment to shout out today's partner, Mint Mobile. You and I both know that you're probably paying more for wireless than you should be. I know I was. For as little as $15 a month, Mint Mobile offers you everything you need. Whether it's speed, coverage, data, access to 5G, or unlimited talk and text. Mint Mobile keeps prices low by operating off the nation's largest 5G network and operating exclusively online. And that means no more pushy sales reps or waiting in long lines. On top of that, switching is easy and customer support is easily accessible through the Mint Mobile app, all from the comfort of your own home. Since making the switch myself, I'm still enjoying all of my favorite YouTube videos, streaming services, and catching up on my favorite podcasts without any drop in performance quality. Start saving today at trymintmobile.com forward slash Dynasty Rewind. The link will be on your screen in the YouTube description box as well as the pinned comment below. And for a limited time, try any three-month plan for just $15 a month if you sign up today. Thank you so much for listening and choosing to support this brand. But with all that said, let's get right to the content you came for. Nate, I'm a little surprised that your next player though. And by a little surprised, I mean not even surprised a little bit. Not at all. <laughs> well, I haven't really talked about him a lot this offseason, Mike. So this is my opportunity now. So I have to talk about Jacoby Myers. Um, another guy who is continuously undervalued and a buy. Uh, since his time with the New England Patriots to his time with the Raiders, um, surpassing Devontae Adams for the second half of the season really as a wide receiver one um, for the Raiders for some time there. Um, and he did that with Aiden O'Connell. I, I don't know who their starting quarterback is going to be this year. They haven't uh, really brought in – they brought in Gardner Minshew. They have Aiden O'Connell there. I don't know if they're going to maybe go up to Michael Penix. I think that fit would be really nice. So I was – not to cut you off, I was looking at their depth chart the other day. Rlads.com has really good off-season depth yeah. charts. Right now, Aiden O'Connell is listed as the starting quarterback. But in this case, I feel like it's very fluid and it could really go either way. Whoever whoever it is, he played with Aiden O'Connell last year, so it can't get worse. Um, And and last year, he put together 800 yards for the third consecutive season. And at this point, his average season is about 70 catches for 800 yards and six touchdowns. Mind you, this is playing on the terrible Patriots offense the last couple years. And then the Raiders offense this year that really wasn't that much better. And he's still been a consistent receiver with those kinds of numbers. And if you take a 70 catch season with 800 yards and six touchdowns and you convert that to fantasy points, Mike, because we play fantasy football and that's what counts for us. That is 186 fantasy points. That comes out to a wide receiver 36 finish. He actually finished as the wide receiver 24 last year with 218.6 points. So I'm telling you that Jacoby Myers basically has a floor of being a wide receiver 36, a low-end wide receiver three. You can pick him up right now for Cortland Sutton, Quentin Johnston, a future late second. I mean, if you're a contending team, you throw a 25 second, you probably can pick up Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers going into your flex spot, you could do a lot worse. If you have a top 36 wide receiver with top 24 potential in your flex spot, you're feeling pretty good about yourself, especially if you picked him up for a player that you probably had sitting on your bench or a late 25 second. All about Jacoby Myers this year. I think he's a great buy to fill your flex spot if you're a contending team. Let's move on to our last one. And got to zig when other people zag, right? So, Nate, I am buying Kansas City Chiefs running back Isaiah Pacheco. He's running back 15 on the season last year. That is a high-end running back, too. And I think he's going to be about that in 2024. Um, While he's productive, he's limited by having Patrick Mahomes as his quarterback because Patrick Mahomes makes a lot of things happen. It doesn't always necessarily involve Isaiah Pacheco. But if this is a ceiling, give it to me. Extremely reliable starter in real life and fantasy, to be honest with you. Yep. It's good as, as a receiver as well. Nate, he had 62 targets last year, 56 catches, three and four yards, and two touchdowns. So he's 25. He's got some time. He's got some tread on those tires, as you like to say. And the fact of the matter is, why do people hate Isaiah Pacheco? He was a seventh-round draft pick. And I understand that Nate says sell day three packs. 
setbacks, but this circumstance feels different to me. I don't see the Kansas City Chiefs actively doing anything to replace Isaiah Pacheco. Every time they've given him any sort of competition, he's come out ahead as the better back. Um, they love him. That's all that matters. Like I said, nobody else has been able to chip away at the workload. So in essence, Nate, the vibes just check out. So check out some of these trades on Fantasy Calc. Here you go. I know you're doing this one. Jameson Williams in the 311 for Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah. I'll do that. And uh, late first, I think it's it done for Isaiah Pacheco as well. Yeah. I think you might be able to get Pacheco even for like an early second. Maybe you need to add a third on top of that. But, you, think- you know, I know it's right on that cusp of do you need to have the first round pick or can you get away with like the 201, 202, 203? I just feel like he's a starting running back with the Kansas City Chiefs. There's got to be that one in front of it, like I've said about Tajay Spears earlier before they signed Tony Pollard. Now his values depreciate a little bit because you know, people panic. So I know that you find that hard to believe. So, <laughs> uh, But that's all I got for today. So thank you for listening. Until next time, Nate, I'm Mike. We'll see you guys later.